The Health and Well-Being Division at Michigan State University is conducting a university-wide health and well-being assessment that includes an anonymous survey. And we're going to talk about that on this episode of MSU Today with three distinguished doctors. We have Dr. Norman J. Beauchamp, Jr. He's MSU's Executive Vice President for Health Sciences. He's also the executive sponsor of the Sustainable Health Theme in MSU Strategic Plan 2030. Norm, always great to have you on the show. It's so great to be here, Russ. Thank you. And we have Dr. Alexis Travis. She's the Assistant Provost and Executive Director of University Health and Wellbeing at MSU. Hello, Dr. Travis. Hi, Russ. Thanks for having me back today. Joining us for the first time, Dr. Renee Kennedy is the CEO of MPHI, which is the Michigan Public Health Initiative. Dr. Kennedy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Russ. Nice to meet you. Let's start, if we could, first, though, Norm, we'll start with you from where you are. Just tell us a little bit about what is the Office of Health Sciences at MSU? What's sort of the mission? Coming back to Michigan State as a double Spartan in 2016, uh, the focus really was how do we bring health, health and healing to the people of, of Michigan. And uh, as, as I've been here, uh, the role of Executive Vice President for Health Sciences was created to help advance that. That role includes, I oversee the College of Human Medicine, uh, in which the, the Department of Public Health also resides, uh, the College of Osteopathic Medicine, the College of Nursing, and then uh, MSU Healthcare uh, are those components. And then I'm a, a partner uh, with my colleagues here as well uh, for the university. And Dr. Travis, tell us about the Health and Wellbeing Division at MSU. What's your mission? Yeah, so it's been a really interesting year since we spoke last time, Russ, and you'll remember we were bringing together 11 units all focused on health and well-being of student, faculty, and staff. And so within the last year, we've kind of reorganized, and now we've centered around four pillars. Those are mental health and trauma support services, health promotion and engagement, campus health services, and then more of an administrative and operational pillar. Um, We've met with our stakeholders over the last year, and what we have agreed upon is a purpose statement for UHW. So UHW is supporting a community where health and well-being is equitably woven into all aspects of campus life. Um, We're uh, really enhancing a sense of well-being, safety, and accessibility in that work and then um, using a culturally competent and responsive lens, um, having a holistic approach to health and well-being. And so this was agreed on by our stakeholders across the university community when they think about what this unit does and how we can support all Spartans. And Dr. Kennedy, tell us about MPHI and what you do. Well, the beauty of MPHI, I would say, is that we are a living, breathing demonstration of governmental and academic innovation. We were created by our state health department 30 plus years ago now to bring together academic partners, governmental partners, and community partners to simply build capacity around how do we assure the health and well-being of Michiganders. And so Michigan State holds two seats on our board of directors, and we're just thrilled to be a part of this really, really transformative project that Dr. Travis is leading. So before we talk about assessing health and well-being, let's define it. How are we defining health and well-being? Yeah, so we've been using the World Health uh, Organization definition of health, which is this complete sense of health, uh, physical health, mental health, social health, and not just the absence of disease or infirmary. And we know that health means different things to different people. So actually, as part of this assessment, one of the things we're going to ask Spartans is what does health mean to you? Because it's subjective, it means different things to different people. And we have people from all over the world here at MSU. And so we want to make sure we're starting this work with a great foundation for what health means to our Spartans. In terms of well-being, we're using the interagency definition of well-being. So that's this um, uh, optimal um, state of overall well-being, thinking about physical, mental health, social well-being, and uh, making sure that people have are able to reach their optimal state to um, fulfill their purpose in life. And so we're really using that as a a starting place for this uh, assessment, but understanding that the data will really lead us to where we need to be. And we're really focused on listening to our Spartans around 
you know, what health is, what well-being is, and what that means today and in the future for our Spartans. Um, I guess I will just add um, sort of the creativity of insightfulness. Even, I think, in the general public, when you hear health, people think about, well, I don't have a cold or I don't have COVID, so my health's pretty good. I don't have high blood pressure. Um, But this lens, which was a choice, to say we're talking broadly about well-being, that includes financial well-being. It includes relationship well-being and all of the biopsychosocial things. Um, and, and I do commend Dr. Beauchamp, who thinks about and helps us think about it broadly, that it's not, even though he's a physician by training, it's not but like, give me all the clinical metrics. Right. So <laughs> that tone that's been set for the project, mm-hmm. I think, is really critical. It might seem obvious, but why is health and well-being a big priority for students, faculty, and staff? How does it impact the students' success and the faculty and staff success? Yeah, so when I think about student success, when I think about faculty and uh, staff success, health is such a major component of that. We know mental health, social health is really important. We see the major impediments to Uh, academic success being stress, being depression, being anxiety, um, basic illnesses, the common cold or flu, um, those things are actually the things that our Spartans report impact their ability to be able to be successful in their academic endeavors, to be able to show up for work. And even beyond those traditional health factors, we see now um, things like caregiving, When people have dependents who need caregiving, that's another service that we offer, backup dependent care. So we're thinking about globally, what impacts somebody's ability to show up, to be present, to fully engage in whatever their purpose is here at MSU. For those who have health, have hope, and for those that have hope, have everything. And for too many people, they don't have access to health, and as was defined, this sense of of well-being right, of physical, mental uh, health in ways that then get in the way of, you know, them being the best version of themselves, them accomplishing academically, them being a part of the lives of their families in the ways that they want to. So it's almost in defining, you know, what is success. Some would say success in and of itself is, you know, feeling comfortable in your place, feeling supported, having equal and equitable access to opportunities. So let's talk about the health and well-being assessment and survey. Who should take the survey? What do you hope to learn from it? Yeah, well, I'll start first. Um, You know, when it comes to the survey, we want all Spartans to take the survey. So we want to hear from students, we want to hear from faculty, and we want to hear from staff. And we're talking about all staff, all faculty, part-time, full-time, everybody in between. Um, We want to reach deep into MSU and just um, have as many people complete the survey as possible so that we have a good and robust data set so that it's representative of all Spartans as much as possible and that we get a true sampling to understand, okay, this is what we need to do to meet the needs of our Spartans today and, and in the future as well. And so I encourage as many people as possible to take the survey and take it sooner rather than later. And how will they know where to go to to, yeah. to take it? That's a good question. So they can go to uhw.msu.edu forward slash assessment. And we will also have posters throughout the university and lots of different methods of outreach. You can also see on our Healthy Spartans um, social media platforms. And so there'll be lots of different ways that people can reach that information. Survey, this survey is about voice. It is about the voice of students. It is about the voice of employees. It is about the voice of parents and anyone that has a relationship linked to Spartan Kingdom, I'm going to call us. How do we honor voice? You, We're filled with brilliant, accomplished people. We could sit in a room, around a conference room, and say, here's what we're going to do, and this is the way we're going to do it. But this was a a philosophical choice to say voice matters, um, the experiences of others as they articulate them, not as how we observe them, 
is vital. And so I think this survey is going to be critically important. I'm a medical sociologist by training. And sometimes when we we're like, if we could get at least 60 percent, we'd be happy from. Nope, we're wanting no voice left out. Mm -hmm. So the higher we get to 100 percent, the more accurate um, the narrative will be that we build. So you do want parents and even alumni then, or how far do we want to go? Will they need their net ID, I guess, to sign in and take the uh, survey? Yeah, we are not requiring a net ID. However, the focus very much is on the Spartan okay. community today and folks who are here uh, today within MSU. Uh, as Dr. Kennedy mentioned, we want to hear from as many people as possible, and every Spartan voice counts in this. So... Spartans will get an email, right? And that's yes. how they will, that link will be in there for mm -hmm. it. And that's yeah. probably how long will it take? To... Yeah, the survey, it takes about eight to 10 minutes for us. It is anonymous. Um, so people don't have to worry about being identified when we report out the data. And we really, you know, wanted to have that safe space for people to share, honestly, what their experiences are, what the needs are, what are the things that they enjoy from our programming, and maybe some of the things that are gaps that we need to uh, fill and what trends we're seeing across uh, MSU. Yeah. yeah, and then just to clarify, the experiences that they'll articulate, we recognize are represented by and informed by relationships that they have. So while parents are not taking the survey, we know that their students are sharing things that are important to them as a family. When you come to Michigan State University, it is often a family experience. And so while it is not them clicking on the buttons, they certainly shape the experience and the knowledge of the students and staff that will be taking it. And starting with you, Dr. Kennedy, what's like MPHI's role in the assessment? Yes. Well, you know, we, as I said before, Michigan State could have easily completed this project without us. The fact that they saw partnership as vitally important is what we do. We bring in a new lens a slightly shifted different lens. You're seeing things from this vantage point. We're seeing it from a different vantage point. And that together strengthens um, the work and the product of what we'll be doing together to shape the programmatic um, emphasis of this uh, effort. And, and, if, and if I can, Russ, I remember when I was sitting with Dr. Travis and she said, how would it be if we could get Dr. Kennedy and MPHI involved? And it was this moment of joy because Dr. Kennedy is so well known for really this community participatory approach mm -hmm. where she has a gift for putting together efforts that actually reach and hear the voices of the community. And ultimately what Dr. Travis and I seek to do then is to build solutions based on you know, what the community mm -hmm. helps us understand that we, we need. What will you do with the information, the data you compile from the survey? Yeah, so we uh, look forward to gathering many different forms of data. We today have talked a little bit about the survey. There are also other forms of data that we are collecting in collaboration with MPHI. So one of the things that the MPHI team was able to do is an environmental scan, looking at all of the different reports that we have in and surrounding health and well-being and pulling data together. So we're not re-asking Spartans the same questions that they've been asked before, but we're filling in some of those gaps. There will be a series of key informant interviews. There will also be some focus groups where we're looking at different groups of Spartans and asking them for their unique lived experience and their perspective on our health and well-being services. So we can really get into what do some of our most minoritized groups experience and how can we pull that in to the center to make sure we're addressing that and really reducing those health disparities that we see um, in some areas of our campus. And so, um, you know, Spartans can look to see a report that will be produced and it's a five-year plan, Russ. And so this will really shape the direction for university health and well-being and our partners working towards the same goals over the next five years. We will have goals, strategies, objectives, um, which are outlined in that plan. And then we look forward to some of the same partners and hopefully some more people joining into a coalition model for implementation because we know we can't do this work alone. It's going to take all of us to get this done. Yeah. 
And Dr. Beauchamp, I mentioned that you're the executive sponsor of the Sustainable Health Pillar of MSU Strategic yes. Plan 2030. How does all this fit into the that pillar of the plan? Yeah, thank you, Russ. That's a really important question because one of the things we want to commit to your listeners and the people taking the survey is this will absolutely be translated into action. And you see that already in Dr. Travis's work with health and wellness where it's driven. And this fits, this is so consistent with the strategic plan. The sustainable health pillar is one of the key pillars. And you can crosswalk what this is directly to each one of the efforts. So for example, uh, objective one is the health the physical and mental health needs of our students, faculty, and staff. This will build directly into that work. Objective three, engage the entire MSU campus in a comprehensive approach to improving health. And this is going to be exactly that. And then what, what we want is we, we deeply believe that if we have an environment where the students feel healthy, the faculty and the staff, then they can go forth right into the community with their research and their education and the jobs, the roles they seek to partner with communities and organizations to reduce health disparities, uh, a key focus, as well as working with health and business partners to ensure patients and families have equitable, high quality, affordable, and safe health care. And so it fits directly with that. And then ultimately, uh, the fourth objective is, is that if, if you're a person who wants a future in bringing health, hope, and healing to others, whether it's in supply chain, whether it's in built environments, public health, communication arts, right, um, nursing, medicine. We want this to be a place you know you can come, you can gain that education, and be a part of an ecosystem that will help you attain those goals for others. So it couldn't be more aligned and just really enthusiastic about how we're going to be more effective in advancing sustainable health because of this effort and the information we get back from this survey. The emphasis on mental health being a part of our overall health must be encouraging to you. You know, you can look now and you can look whether it's faculty, students, staff, um, 30, 35% of people experience, are experiencing a sense of burnout, right? Mm -hmm. This hopelessness, don't know how they're going to get things done. And so by making that a key part of this, um, I think it's really, really important. Yeah. I think we've brought um, to the table a real demonstration of authenticity here. Um, it's my hope that people not only will um, participate, but they'll be better having participated. That, that they will then experience, oh, they took the time to ask me this. I should take the time to ask my staff or the community or whomever. So it's sort of the duality of what we've learned that we're living it, we're walking it, and not just talking it. So I just really think the benefits of what we're doing, that this is not an easy check the box. Well, we did a survey and here's what we came. Um, Dr. Travis described sort of a multi um, strategy. We're going to do qualitative uh, data collection. We've got the quantitative and all of the engagement in community. That's It's going to be a really important trajectory just as the 2030 plan sets an important trajectory for the university at home. So the strategy will come out of the assessment and the survey and then be implemented and evolve over the five years? Is that it? Yeah, that's exactly right. And so, um, you know, all being well, the uh, assessment results and the plan document will be released in later this spring semester. And then from there, we're not taking any breaks. We're going straight into implementation. And, um, you know, we're launching this uh, co collaborative. And as part of that, you know, we do look towards formally adopting the Okanagan Charter, uh, which is, you know, an internationally recognized framework. It's the backbone of the assessment that we're doing. We've integrated that as well as eight domains of well-being into our assessment. And so we're ready. We have all of the partners who have committed. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our 16 member steering committee and our 75 member advisory committee, as well as our expert panel who are all in farming this work, along with the broader Spartan community who are making this happen. Wow. So I love that Dr. Travis has brought this very gracious 
sense of urgency. Like, take your time, but hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> she has a plan and a trajectory, and we are driving For the through. benefit of your own health. <laughs> yes, for the benefit of So Spartan health. Nation, look for that email. Do we know what the subject line will say? Um, I think it will say University Health and Wellbeing Assessment, um, and folks will know it uh, from the outline uh, right. in the email in that uhw.msu.edu forward slash assessment. I'll give that again, too. But uh, just some final thoughts, or is there anything important I haven't asked you that you want to make sure people listening know about the assessment? Well, you know, they say that when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and we're health people, so it all looks like health to us. <laughs> um, so when people, if, if anyone feels like, well, I'm not a health person or I don't have to worry about this, we actually all do. And word of mouth is going to be a really helpful and important strategy for us. So when someone does complete the survey, the assessment, if they'd say to their friend or their classmate, hey, did you do that? It was really easy. It didn't take that long. No, you really should do it. We, uh, we want all of us to help us drive uh, a wonderful uh, response rate. So our information is important. And not every survey will have such a direct positive impact on the people who give you the uh, the information you're looking for. Mm -hmm. so. so again, it's uh, uhw.msu.edu slash assessment, and that's for the Health and Well-Being Division at MSU, and it's University-Wide Health and Well-Being Assessment, and that includes this anonymous survey we've been talking about. So Drs. Travis, Kennedy, Beauchamp, thank you so much for being on the program today and telling us about it. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Russ. Thanks, Russ. I'm Russ White. This is MSU Today.